was performing. He was performing here. Perform We're going to get to his residence. Yes. Uh, this place is called a Butemeta, generally, and it, it, it represents the middle class as of that time. This is uh, Skype the father that I see there. So this is where I actually started. A yeah. lot of crowds, you know, every Saturday, every Friday. So when people came in here after listening to music, leaders of women, so women started settling here. Converted to a school. How are you? Who's there? Can you tell us something about the, this locality? He was saying that, that the, the, the plots of land belonged to Fela and Nicola Gokuchi, uh -huh. but you know, they were confiscated by the government uh -huh. and then the government turned them to secondary schools. Which government? And school. That was a vast of those government. Okay. During the military you know, era, who okay. was named after Kenas family as an Memorial Secondary School. I see. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. One interesting thing about it is that here is a church, if you see the apostolic church, um, the other side was a mosque for Christian, for Muslim, fella was in between them. He chose to, you know, pick this location, yeah, strategically, he was in between them. And then every Saturday, he will be yabbing the pastor, <laughs> yabbing the imam, <laughs> and people will be smoking um, um, Nigerian natural grass right on the road, you know, mm. and this place was a behave of activities in those days. I mean, it's been taken over by computer shops now, but there was no computer uh, mm. as of that time. It was always, once you dropped at the underbridge, you hear noise. Country was one. Of fella up and then Darlene here, and fella will come and enter through this place, and then we'll have show till the second. Day. So this we are talking about um, the early nineties. Early no no from eighties. From eighties. This was the last shrine that fella had till he ancestorized. I I thought <laughs> no. Yes. I thought it was the other place that was burned down. No. No, no, the, the, no, the shrine uh -huh. is not shrine per se. That's the place that um, Fela son, Femi, uh -huh. chose to call the shrine after the death of Fela. But the shrine for Fela uh -huh. is a place where you worship the ancestors, uh -huh. not just play music. So here, there was church, there was mosque, okay. but in Fela shrine, we worship Songo. Obu, Oshu, Oya, and we made sacrifices to them. Now, in today's shrine, where you have Femi shrine, uh, oh, which is still different... known as African shrine, yeah. yes. the ancestral worship is no longer taking place. We just dance to good music, and uh, we share African ideology. And that's the distinction between the original Fela shrine, and of course, what exists today in okay. Femi state. Yeah. So why did this shrine, uh, shrine close then? Or when did it close? Oh, um, okay. It, it, it's interesting to know that um, even while Fela was alive, many cases were in court. You know, by the church, by the mosque, by the neighbors. <laughs> He's standing on Fela's spirit, and that's a bitter blessing from God. He's also standing on the gate of the
Bürger full of water. <lacht> So we are now at the mausoleum for Fela, which is located at the Karakuta Museum. The Karakuta Republic Museum. Is that Fela's first wife? No, the mother. Yeah, yeah no, that's the mother. And this is Femi. And this is Femi. Femi is the oldest son? No. Uh, we have the whole of No, the he's the oldest. Yes. The oldest. The oldest. Among the other uh, sons. Like yes. Shell, like yes. Pule, 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 Nobody's Nobody is like inside his room. Oh, no, yeah. but Fela didn't even care for anybody to see. You know, what they're doing is lifetime. Nobody in jail now. He lives. So what you have seen today is uh, the exact uh, building, the exact house where Fela built by himself. Unfortunately, he couldn't live longer than uh, three, four years before he died. And uh, the house was eventually turned to a museum where all of his instruments, his properties, have been archived for toys are uh, uh, attractions yeah. for toys and toys and purposes. And this is the significance of this uh, museum, you know, is to is to the holding of the heritage, the ideas and uh, all the stuff that we like this for. And that's why we are here to showcase and uh, let our world know this. So the exact things that we are going to be doing is the first of the ideas of Fela Kuti. And as you move around the museum, you see on all the walls, you know, all of his uh, images, you know, the setting and ideas, the first of his, down to his uh, eyesight. I hope they will be enjoying the visit to the Kuti. Then I'll uh, Fela Kuti. And this Shola died the same year Fela died. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah, she died the same year Fela died. She was the eldest. Yeni was the eldest. Yes. Yeni was after Yeni Shola. After Shola is a uh, Femi. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, after Femi, we still have Sheung. Although not from the same mother. Sheung is from another mother, another fella, uh, wife of fella. Okay. Yeah. And this is. <laughs> this is <this> Femi. <laughs> <laughs> This family, they have a life. First marriage, right? Yeah. First, yes, yeah, that's first, first marriage. marriage. This is with his mom, right? Yeah, this is mom. Yes. This is mom. Yes. Well, that is the first family. That's the first family. The first family. Yeah, the first family. The original. Yes. What, but where is Fela here? In, with the mother? Huh? Fela, like, yes, this. That's Fela, Fela here. Yes. Fela in the room. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, Beko is. We have Beko, no Beko, and Riko here. They are older than Fela. So we have Beko, we have Riko here. Yeah. Yeah.
I'm Lauren and I'm here to present at the Felakuti Onhere conference on African homelands and social theory and I'm really excited about the program today it's gonna be wow it's gonna be very inspiring for me and I hope we will have very good discussions and uh, talks today and <laughs> Have you seen the uh, book of abstracts? I've seen the book of abstracts and it's really promising to be a great event. There are so many scholars proposing a lot of interesting hypotheses and I'm really looking forward to see that. How did you find out about the conference? I found out about the conference when I was uh, looking in the... I, I'm receiving always a newsletter about the conferences which are put up worldwide. And uh, usually I just scroll through, but I stopped when I read Fela Kuti Honorary Conference because I'm a big fan of Afrobeat and Fela Kuti. And that's why I thought, oh, I need to go there. <laughs> I have to come to Nigeria and uh, just uh, transcend my limitations to the European and American context and also get in touch with African scholars. So what, what attracts you, you know, in terms of Fela Kuti? What do you like about him? I really like, uh, first of all, his music and his style. But secondly, and this is equally important, uh, his uh, ideas about Pan-Africanism and his uh, uh, activism for uh, equal rights and social justice. This is really important to me personally as well and I thought wow Fela Kuti is not just a musician but he's very politically conscious and he, he's really into it and he wants to get things done and he wants to change uh, all the divisions which are there among the nations and this is why I really, really like Fela Kuti too. He's, he's ah. combining the best things, uh, what, for, what are for me the best things, is activism and music. And too. music, right. Uh, and also challenging the, the meritocracy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, his, his issues are the same as we, we are facing today. It's not that much, many things have changed so far, unfortunately that uh, his criticism is still valid today and his messages are important for us too even though they were put forward 30, 40, 50 years ago Indeed, and, indeed And unfortunately it's still valid and we have to pick up on his, his ideas again to challenge uh, the politics and the economy of our days um, and I think yeah. it's a, he's a very powerful source and point of reference to do that. So because we can draw on his uh, his uh, his celebrity in a way. Yes. And we can gather around his uh, charisma and say, all right, yeah, we are we are all uh, sharing his ideals, and we will. We want to participate and contribute to this struggle against the injustice, against the exploitation, against global capitalism, against the nationalism which is dividing our people. In, and this, this is why I, I came here all this way. Which university are you based in? I'm from the University of Innsbruck in Austria. And uh, nobody in Innsbruck knew anything about about Vela Kuti or, or about uh, Nigeria or about uh, Africanist scholars. It's not very well represented in, in Austria or in Europe in general, unfortunately, because I think this is uh, it's very important for us to get into that and to to connect and build up more connections between the scholars and activists worldwide and to become, yeah, to, to create an academia 
which is more uh, responsible and which is uh, taking a lead in in challenging the problems are we are facing today and I believe we as uh, scholars we have to contribute we cannot just uh, sit in our offices and wait to get our paychecks and we need to actively engage and that is why I, I, I came here and made this effort and well well, welcome to Nigeria <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to the Fela Kuti Conference. Thank you.